Hello and welcome to this video. If you're interested in analyzing text using Python, then this video is for you. We are going to analyze sentiment of texts here and analyze the uh, syntactic structure of text, tokenize them, lemmatize them, and all that using Stanza, which is a Python NLP package for many human languages. It supports around 70 languages for certain tasks. Stanza was developed by the Stanford NLP group and they uh, developed Core NLP, which was written in Java. But now Stanza is written in Python, so it has a Python inter interface to Core NLP, so it makes it easier for us to use it. Now it provides a uh, native impl Python implementation, full neural network pipeline for all these tasks, which I will explain in detail. And you can see the pipeline is like this. So before I start coding, I'm going to explain what this means. So this is an overview of Stanza's neural network NLP pipeline. It receives a text, a raw text, and it processes the text using these processors. It tokenizes the text, that is, it turns the text into tokens or words. Uh, for example, below would be one token, is one token, and stanza would be one token, apostrophe S would be a separate token, and punctuations are also separate tokens. Then it can even expand multi-word tokens. For example, in Spanish, you have all these words packed into one word, well, at least it seems like it's one word, like damelo, which means da, give, me, mi, lo, that. It's like three words, but it seems like one, so it expands those. Then you have a limitization, that is, it turns every word into its original dictionary form. For example, something like efforts would be, the lemma of efforts is effort. That would be singular version or something like is would be be like to be is the original root of that word it is really useful for text analysis to see this because you don't want to specify how many is is or r's or ams are there you want to know for example the word uh, the verb to be how has that been used then you have part of speech tagging that is if something is a noun verb adjective also, it parses the dependency structure of a sentence or a constituency structure of a sentence. I will explain using these two diagrams what these mean, constituency relation and dependency relation. And then also recognizes named entities. For instance, uh, it will recognize that Python is an entity which is, doesn't refer to uh, a snake rather to the programming language or an organization or core NLP or a stanza it does not refer to stanza in a, in a poem but to a Python package. So it receives a text, processes the text and then it gets it gives you this document with all these annotations and all these um, uh, syntactic structures and all that. So now let's get to a coding environment. I'm using uh, Colab, Google Colab. I have installed, pip installed Stanza first, then I have imported Stanza, and I have downloaded the English model. Otherwise you can use the German or whatever else you want. The next step is to initialize the English neural pipeline by using stanza.pipeline, parentheses, uppercase P. You can store this into a whatever you want. I've stored it in NLP. And as you can see, we have access to all these processors now. If you want to use a specific processor, then you can specify that here. Processors equals then one of these. But by default, we are going to have access to all. Now that we have NLP pipeline, what we need to do is to give this NLP a piece of text then we'll get a document. So now here, I'm going to create, uh, have a text. Let's just say, he does not like uh, Chomsky's work. He loves Halliday's 
SFL, systemic functional linguistics. Okay, now we have a piece of text. Let's create a document by passing this text into our neural pipeline. Now we've passed in this text into this pipeline and now we have doc. What is this doc now? If I print this, you will see we have this text on steroids. You can see here. As you can see, we have a list of lists and there are dictionaries for every token in there. For example, ID1, there is a text he, lemma is he, universal part of speech is pronoun, tree bank part of speech, expose is personal pronoun. If you don't know what that is, you can simply search um, one of these ways, which is like a pen tree bank, POS tags. It's a list of them. You can see PRP, for example, stands for uh, personal pronoun. And then you have the features of cases, nominal, nominative, gender, masculine, and all that. The dependency is subject. And named entity is empty, so it's, it's not a named entity. Then you have text of does. The lemma is do. It's an auxiliary. And you can see here a tree bank, verb, second, uh, third person, present tense. So this refers to what it functions here in this text and this one is more general mood indicative and all that so this is what you get now let's get rid of this so now if i want to have access to the entities inside a text it's so simple doc dot ends that's it it gives me all the entities you see chomsky person starting character at 17 if you count ending character of 25 then holiday holiday person sfl organization you can have a better nicer access to it you can say for i in doc dot ends you can print i dot text and i dot type so you can see i dot text is here and i dot type is this one now if i run this you will see i have chomsky holiday and sfl Okay, let me just zoom in. Now, let's take a look at words and sentences. How can I uh, segment my text into sentences and then words? So again, it's simple. Let's say for sent or for sentences in sentence in doc dot sentences. So doc dot sentences, this attribute gives me access to all the sentences and I can print that sent dot text not just sent but the text of that sentence so now i have these two sentences to access the words or tokens remember tokens are words or oops actually like this um, apostrophe s punctuation all of these are tokens now let me run this again okay now what i want to do and uh, right here I can say now we have we are inside a sentence now which is a send I can say for let's say I or word in send that single sentence dot tokens so these are the tokens I want to print every word the text of that word so let's see now you can see this is what we get awesome so we have all these tokens but um, okay yeah whatever so now here we have um, yes we have the tokens but now if I want to have access to more attributes of this token like what is the features of this he what is the part of speech of this he what is the lemma of this does I can use words instead of tokens and in that way I have access to the text which is he for example I can have access to let's just create a tab in there I can have access to a word that lemma the lemma of that text another tab there and let's just word dot I don't know yeah part of speech now let's run this one and see he he pronoun this is the lemma 
you see it also lower cases them does the do do is the lemma for does and then you can see all the way down there so this is the difference between words and tokens okay now sentiment something that most people are interested in so for sentiment again we can pass in uh, the sentences so for sent in doc dot sentences we can say print uh, that sentence dot text the text of the sentence and sent dot sentiment the sentiment of that sentence so now we have he does not like Chomsky's work is zero he loves holidays SFL too so as you can see we have a number which ranges from one zero to two zero is the um, negative one is neutral and two is positive so this one has a positive sentiment to it and this one has a negative sentiment okay now um, the last thing I'm going to talk about is constituency and dependency so let's get to this entry on Wikipedia phrase structure grammar phrase structure is the work of uh, Chomsky uh, basically and then we have um, we have dependency grammar which you can read about here it's uh, the work of uh, Lucien I have no idea how to pronounce this and uh, there are different ways of representing um, the syntactic structure of a sentence so constituency uh, is basically about phrase structures and the constituents in a sentence for instance it considers the tree as one constituent you can see this tree you can see this house you can see this man for example but not this this tree is this is not a one constituent so this tree is one constituent hence one phrase and that phrase is com uh, consists of two nodes which is a determiner and a noun then we have a verb phrase which starts from is all the way to the end and with is and then it consists another verb phrase with another verb in it and then another noun phrase with a determiner an adjective and a noun so there you can see there are nested phrases inside other phrases but here we have a dependency relation which shows how each word is dependent or related directly to another word for example the head in this case for dependency relation is normally the verb of a sentence is the head unlike uh, phrase structures so then you can see the verb is directly related to tree tree is directly related to this here you can see it's different verb phrase is not directly related to any of these but here we do not have such a thing everything is directly related to something next to it so now we have this related to tree related to is related to illustrating related to relation and the relation is the head of dependency and the is is the head of tree and this so this is how it works now if we want to uh, display this here i can simply say um for i in again let's go at the sentence level sentences here print print i dot constituency come on suggest it suggest it suggest it constituency okay anyways it's not so constituency yes okay now if I print this you can see here that I have a root and a sentence so a sentence spans all the way up to here then we have a noun phrase which is only uh, including uh, a personal pronoun he then we have a verb phrase which goes all the way up to here and up to the, uh, the punctuation then inside that we have a verb phrase verb again which is a third person present tense does then you can see all the way we have different uh, elements so this is the constituency or the phrase structure of this sentence so then we have dependencies dependencies as well this one is a bit more verbose so as you can see starts with like the verb as the root 
of the sentence. So this verb, which is idea of four, is a root of the sentence. Then we have a subject, which is he, and down below you can see the head of the subject is four, number four, which is four, which is like. So like is the, the head of he. And then if you go down below, this like again is the head, this time of does as well, of the auxiliary does. Down below, again, you can see there is like, which is the head of not, like, again, the head of work. And then here is difference. Chomsky is the head of number seven, but what is number seven? So if you go down below, Chomsky's work, number seven. So Chomsky, work is the head of uh, the word Chomsky. And that is how the dependency structure works. So you can also have access to um, the children of the constituencies. For example, let me see if I can get it correct. Let's just say we have a tree and the tree is going to be doc dot sentences. And let's say the first sentence dot constituency. Let's see if I can get this one correct. Oops, I should uh, have uh, what? Oh, equals. Yes, and let's have tree dot children. Let's see if this one works. I hope it works. Yes, so now you can see that for the first sentence, for instance, we have this. Um, the constituency of the first is the children, and then I can also say tree dot label. It should give me a root. I guess, yes, so the root is, is uh, the label is is the root of this one and that's how we can also access uh, the other phrases as well okay i think that was a very quick uh, introduction to uh stanza which is a, a great uh, package nlp package uh, although they have suggested that for certain things like tokenization or lemmatization you, you, you'd better use space it's, it's faster especially if you do not have uh, that much data uh, but it, it works great especially for constituency for dependency uh, parsing as well and um, and yeah that was it uh, I hope you liked it please don't forget to like this video and leave a comment down below thank you very much for watching and listening